So glad you're with me this week. Got a great dynamite word for you. I mean, this is a yoke breaking word right here. It's found in Isaiah 53, 5. And it says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed by his stripes, by his stripes. How many people say that? And yet the depth of the meaning of that verse by is God does not heal us because we're good. He heals us because he's good. He doesn't heal us because we've always lived right, had a right diet, had right habits, and hung around the right people. He doesn't heal us because that's not what this verse says. This verse is something that says, I want to pull rank and file above all your relations, all your behavior. And if you'll focus on what I did on Calvary, no matter how you lived and who you were with and what you did, you're going to be healed. You are healed by that act on Calvary because of my stripes. What happens is many people memorize this verse and they say it and they say it, but deep embedded in a lot of us, even though we know the verse, we think, well, I got to be good. I got to eat everything just right. And of course, eating right is a great asset to your health, but you're not healed because you eat right. And you're not healed because you have the right doctor. I mean, these people back in that day, many of them had leprosy because of the sanitation issues. And many of them were sick because of the sin issues and dietary issues and et cetera, et cetera. You know, he healed them anyhow. I want to tell you about our God. He's all about getting you well and getting you strong in spite of you. And when I say you, I mean the lack of knowledge. I mean the lack of behavior. I mean the lack of being in the right place at the right time. If we'll just focus and begin to call on him, who's him? Jesus the Christ and we will say I believe what you did on that cross by your I'm healed by your stripes I'm healed by what action you took nothing else your stripes from your back to my body say that with me from his back to my body one more time from his back to my body if you'll just continue to say that in spite of where you've been and who you've been with and what you've done, you'll watch the healing string flow right into your body and your being and heal you and make you whole. That's your work for the week. All right. Now, if you fool enough to believe that. <clears throat> all right. First off, let me go ahead. First off, I want to. Give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rakakudash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. And to all my brothers out here preaching this truth to you, I say Shalom. This is Amatazar from the Chicago camp coming back at you again with another lesson entitled, By His Stripes We Are Healed Wrong From His Back to My Body. Okay? So, you just heard this, what seems to be a, a Edomite, okay? He says, from my back, okay, from his, his back to my body. He says, if you would say that, remember that and say that, and you can watch the healing flow into your body. All right? Now, does that make sense? <laughs> you can say that. And it'll just flow into your body. He made a comment. He kept saying, our God, right? Well, we don't serve the same God. That's number one. All right. Um, another thing, too, is he was talking about people being healed in that day from leprosy. He's still dealing with leprosy right now. He's, he's saying from his back to my body, he's still dealing with leprosy. So while he's standing there in front of... Uh, you know, his piano with the background music all beautiful. He's got that comb over. All right. You can't say from his back to my body and just appropriate. All right. Um, the healing. All right. That's meant for the nation of, of Israel and the chastisement that Yahweh went through. Not only from his sins as uh, Solomon, but for the sins of the nation of Israel. You can't appropriate those things unto yourself. All right. Um, when you talk about personal pronouns, let me show you the wickedness. All right. And the hypocrisy of Esau Edom. The personal pronouns is important. All right. Everywhere, but in the Bible. 
to the point where today in society, because of the so-called rainbow people or the LGBTQ people, right? They're at the point where if a person identifies as a gender other than what they're born into, they can say, I, I, um, I, uh, I, I, I am, uh, what they, what they call it? I identify. That's what it is. I identify. You could be a woman saying I identify as a male. So on your email and things of that, no, that nature, you can say, I, I want to be addressed as him. So a female could say, I want to be addressed as him, you know, or they, or whatever, some stupid shit. But and same thing with a man. If he identifies as a woman, he's going to say that, you know, he identifies as her, he, she, or, or she, she, her. It's all stupid as hell, right? But they can literally put an EEO violation against you if you don't call them what they identify as. And you see this happening in, in schools as well, because if a teen identifies if a teen girl identifies as a he, okay, there can be legal uh, reper repercussions against a girl's own father. All right, we've seen that happen in the news because he, re if a father refused to call his daughter a him, I mean it's all wickedness. But for those pronouns being so important, it's never important when it comes to the scriptures. Let's see what it says. It says personal pronouns are used to replace nouns and refer to people and things that have already been uh, mentioned. They reflect persons, number and gender. So a personal pronoun are used to replace nouns and refer to people and things that have already been mentioned. All right. So it's important to understand who who you're talking about. All right. So you have to reference the we and the you. Okay. Um, also just for, um, just for the purpose of the lesson, I put the uh, picture of the slave whose back was torn up. All right. Which is the character Will Smith played, uh, in, in that slavery movie that was released about two years ago. All right. So here we go. So who is the we and who is the who, the you, Salaki? This is Amos 3 and 1. It says, hear this word that Yahweh have spoken against you, comma, O children of Israel. So now we know that the you is the children of Israel. It says against the whole family, which I brought up from the land of Egypt. So now, not only does he further identifies, okay? So Amos further identifies, it says, you, O children of Israel, that whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. So why is Amos 3 and 2, okay, not being taken seriously? I mean, it's very, very clear. It says, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. The Lord says, all right, he only knows Israel. I just paused a little bit just to let that sink in. Isaiah 53 and 5 says, but he was bruised for our transgression. So who will be the hour? If the Lord says he only knows Israel, who's the hour? But he was bruised for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Okay. So I've heard um, this scripture misappropriated so many times, uh, many years, a few, few years back. Well, it was quite a few years back before I came into the truth. Um, one of my, uh, favorite cousins invited me to her church. And as I sat in the church service, 
um, the preacher used Isaiah 53 and 5. Okay. So, so this pastor, and he basically was saying that all sickness and disease, okay, uh, ended or, or died on the cross with Yahweh Okay. But he says Christ, of course, we, we get it. Or well, he says Jesus, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus. Right. But the point is, they took this scripture and misappropriated and said that all sickness and disease died on the cross with Yahweh Shai. All right. And if you're suffering from any sickness or disease today, it's because of your lack of faith. You see? It's because of your lack of faith or some sin in your life that you're sick. Okay. So when the church service was over, of course, I uh, went up to this particular preacher or pastor. And again, this was way before I came into the truth. And I asked him about that scripture. And did it really, do you really believe that it, it dealt with, with, uh, with sin and disease? You know, sickness and disease rather. Okay. And so he reiterated that all sickness and disease is basically... You know, it died with Yahweh. Right as he said that, a woman walked up. Okay. She looked to be in her 60s. And she said, Pastor, the cancer came back. And the doctor said, There's nothing more they, they can do. Right in front of me. And he said, We're going to keep praying. We're going to keep praying. See, he didn't even believe what he said. Okay. These people don't believe. This is Christianity we're talking about. They don't even believe what they're saying. Uh, if you if you understood the scriptures and understood the uh, the punishments that were being punished with, you would understand, all right, that sickness and disease and all of those things, all right, this is also all part of the curses. Okay? It's just part of the curses of us being here. We're going to be here. We're going to be delivered from these curses eventually. Okay, but this is part of it. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so let's go first Peter two and nine. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into this marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of the most high which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and the bishop of our souls. All right, so who is that peculiar uh Peculiar people. Who is that royal priesthood? All right, this is Deuteronomy 14 and 1. Ye are the children of Yahweh. It says, Ye are the children of Yahweh, your power. Ye shall not cut yourselves nor make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. For thou art a holy people unto Yahweh thy power, and Yahweh have chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all nations that are upon the earth. Okay? So, talking about the Israelites. This is Exodus 19 and 5. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Okay. Psalms 135 and 4. For Yahweh have chosen Jacob unto himself and Israel for his peculiar treasure. All right. So it should be no misunderstanding of who, 
first Peter is talking about. Okay. First Peter is talking about Israel and the Gentiles. Okay. In these scriptures that were not a people are the Israelites. So let's read first Peter two and nine again. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into this marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of the Most High, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. All right. So a few things is uh, quite a few things here to uh, understand. Uh, number one, who is that royal priesthood, which are Israelites? All right, that they're, they're not Christians who appropriate themselves to be um, the children of the Lord. OK, they're specific people. All right. Also, it says who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. OK. Um, also. It talks about his people being like sheep. OK, so Israelites, Israelites are like sheep. All right. This is Roman nine and one. Also in the New Testament, I say the truth in Hamashiach. I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were cursed from Hamashiach for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites. So the who is the personal pronoun, okay, of the whom, okay, to whom pertain it, the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of the Most High and the promises whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh, Hamashiach came, who was over all, the Most High blessed forever, amen. So here you have, here in Romans, the ninth chapter, it tells you what belongs or what pertains to the Israelites. All right. The adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law, the service of the Most High and the promises. And it tells you is uh, these promises are the fathers and of whom is concerning the flesh. Hamashiach came. Okay. So the death of Hamashiach pertains to the Israelites. That's what you have to understand. All right, so let's get some supporting scriptures. Psalm 77 and 15. Thou hast with thine arm redeemed thy people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph. Okay, so Salah. All right, so thy people are the sons of Jacob and Joseph. All right, those are the Israelites or the 12 tribes. Okay. So thou hast with thine arm redeemed thy people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph. It's important to know who his people are. Joel 3 and 16. It says, Yahweh also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But Yahweh will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. <laughs> His people are the children of Israel. All right. Which are the sons of Jacob and Joseph. Isaiah 41 and 8. But thou, Israel, art my servant. Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. You see, this is why Christians stay out of the Old Testament. Because there are too many scriptures that tell you who the Lord is dealing with. They prefer to stay in the New Testament after, okay, 
They want they they want to stay in the scriptures that come after. Um, well, let's let's say they want to stay in what they call the New Testament. They want to start in Matthew and go to Revelation and 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 appropriate all the blessings. All right, to anyone who believes. Okay, because they take scriptures out of context. All right. And they don't they don't want to go into the Old Testament because how 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 specific the Old Testament is with the children of Israel and who he's dealing with. OK, um, so you had the Bible Dest destruction group took the Apocrypha out of the Bible. OK, and that would be the section between Malachi and Matthew. All right. Um, so let's, let's keep going. Uh, Leviticus 25 and 55, for unto me the children of Israel are servants. They are my servants whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. I am Yahweh, your power. Okay. Leviticus 26 and 45, but I will for their sakes remember the covenant of their ancestors whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the heathen that I might be their power. I am Yahweh. These are the statutes and the judgments and laws which Yahweh made between him and the children of Israel in Mount Sinai by the hand of Moses. Okay. Now, now, come on now. Here you have the Lord specifically saying that I will remember the covenant of their ancestors whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the heathen. So he's telling you, I brought them out of Egypt and the heathen were able to witness it. Okay. I made promises to my people and the heathen were able to witness it. These are the statutes and the judgments and the laws which Yahweh made between him and the children of Israel. Okay. He didn't make any covenants, statutes or laws. Okay. With any other people. How do we know that? You just go right back up. Amos 3 and 1. Okay? Well, I'll say Amos 3 and 2. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities, speaking in response to the children of Israel. Okay? Amos 3 and 1. Hear this word that Yahweh has spoken against you, O children of Israel against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. All right, so there you have it again, okay? Uh, the Lord only knows Israel. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it off right there, all right? And then you'll come right back, and we'll pick back up. So this that's going to be... Uh, the end of uh, part one, by his stripes we are healed wrong from his back to my body.